Hey, McFly subscribers. So I've got a review for you today, and this is on my tent. Last week I did a review on my sleeping bag, and a few people have asked for some reviews on some of the camping equipment I've used in the last couple videos. So I'm trying to do that. So this is the Kelty Soli Solada, sorry, can't pronounce it, Solida, my bad. So S-A-L-I-D-A, -A, the Kelty Salida 2. Okay, so it's a two-person tent. They have a three and a four, I think a six and an eight possibly. Don't quote me on the eight, but I think they, I definitely, am pretty sure they go up to six. Overall, so you guys don't have to sit through the whole thing. I am going to do a full in-depth review of it. But if you just want to, you just want to find out the info uh, right away, definitely a good tent. For the money, they're about $150 roughly, depending on where you get them. Sometimes they're on sale, sometimes they're a little more. But I've seen them anywhere from like 120 to 180 okay? And they're, they're really, for that price range, it's a great tent. You can get something lighter, you can get something, you know, more spacious. You, you know, there, there's definitely tents out there that are better on specific issues than this. But, you know, some are cheaper, some are more. In fact, to get something much better than this, I think, in my opinion, you're going to be spending hundreds of dollars, 500 plus, maybe 300. There's, there's a couple that are 300 that might, might fit the bill. But overall, there's a great tent. You would not be disappointed in it if you spent the $150 and took it out. Now, obviously, looking at it, it's a little bulky. It's a little big. It is 4, point, 4 pounds, 9 ounces, fully packed. Okay, that's with everything in it. So it is a little, it may be a little heavy. It's not an ultra light. For 100, the, the price range, it's a great tent for what it is. Okay? So definitely thumbs up, buy it if you're kind of on a budget and don't want to spend a lot of money and you want a decent tent. This is it. This is a good one for the two person, if that's what you're looking for. It works great as a one person tent. That's why I kind of use it for. Yeah. All right, so let's get more into the details of this tent. Definite specifics of weight and size and measurements and all that. Obviously the weight, like I said, is four pounds, nine ounces. It says right here, fully packed, four pounds, nine ounces. That comes with, that's with the, the bag, that's with all the, the steaks, that's with everything that comes with it. This is four pounds, nine ounces. Now I take that back, I've got the footprint, the tent footprint is in here, so that kind of, this might be actually be in the five pound range. The tent footprint has a little bit extra weight. And I generally take that with me. Sometimes I'll take it out if I've got a longer trip and I want to keep the weight down. And sometimes I don't even take the bag and I'll take out some of the, the stakes, right? If I'm trying to lower the weight. Now, the minimum, it says, the very minimum, that probably is without the stakes, without, might, keep four of them or something like that. But the very minimum weight is three pounds, 14 ounces. That's probably without the bag, that's just sticking in your bag, right? And sticking in your, your backpack. So that's not bad though. Three pounds, four, 14 ounces. Really, that's, that's it's not still not quite an ultra light. But again, you're getting, you know, with this, you're getting a very waterproof tent. I've had it pour rain and been in this. And it did well. In fact, I had the last time I went out to Visito Lake and I took this, it, it did great and it hailed. I mean, it wasn't big hail and we're not talking <laughs> big hail pierced right through, but it was the little popcorn snow, I guess you would call it, but it stung my face and it rained. It did a little bit of hail and it held up fine, held up great. There's no holes in it, no nothing. Quality tent, it seems like it would last a long time. Some of those ultralights are really, really thin and they can they can rip easier. Uh, this is a pretty heavy duty tent and for the weight, I think it's very good quality, even though it is somewhat heavy. Okay, so let's look at the height. So the height total, the, the highest from the, the center of the tent 
you can see the shape of the tent. It is a dome, right? So they're, they're talking right here from the very top part where you would sit is, it says right here, you can see how someone's sitting there. I don't know if you can see that. It says three pounds, seven, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> three feet, seven inches. So that's not bad, three feet, seven inches. That should be enough for most people. Definitely enough for me. I'm only five, five foot eight, roughly around there, five foot seven and a half. So that's definitely enough for me because my sit up height is probably around the two and a half, maybe three feet. Three feet, seven inches, plenty for me. I've never had issues in my head touching the top. And in fact, Carter went with me on one of those trips and he didn't have any issue with it. He thought it was quite roomy. So he's, uh, and he's like pushing six foot and he had no trouble. For some of you that are like six and a half feet, maybe you might have trouble, I'm not sure. But really it's not that bad. Seven, uh, three feet, seven inches. Not that bad, you can sit up in it. It feels very roomy, especially a one per as a one person. So the floor plan though is only seven feet, I'm sorry, four feet, seven inches wide. So that does make for a little bit of a cozy situation as a two person. Now Carter, when I brought him, he's tall, but he is, he isn't, you know, he's not, I'm heavier than he is. He's rather, you know, thinner. He's definitely a lot more fit. He's younger, you know, um, <laughs> but he, uh, him and me kind of fit, felt a little tight. But the nice thing of how this is shaped, the top part is four foot seven inches, but the bottom is three, three nine, right? Three feet, nine inch. Now, when you're sleeping, your top part is much more broad than your feet. You're shaped more like a, like a triangle. So, so that's how, kind of how it thinks. It saves the weight by making it smaller and in the areas you don't necessarily need. So your feet are going to be, you know, um, so it's a, you know, it's a rhombus, I guess you would call it shape it's not a perfect square so it does give you i mean it's 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 not super roomy but you know you're 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 trading weight versus roominess right weight versus comfort so four feet seven inches wide and three feet nine inches wide at the base now the total length is seven foot four inch however it is shaped so it's not like a seven foot four inch person is going to fit fine Okay, it is shaped like this, right? It's a dome. And so your head is gonna be sitting up a little higher off there. You'd be touching the, if you were seven foot four, you definitely still feel cramped, right? So probably max, I would say a six and a half foot person would be max in my guess, but I don't know exactly. It doesn't really say anywhere. It might in, you know, I don't read all the instructions. I probably should, but I don't. They're pretty simple to set up. I just don't really read everything. But seven foot four inches is the total length, but again, it does kind of get narrow because of the dome shape a little as you go higher up. So that's something to think about. But seven foot four inches long, that's still not bad. Um, some of these super ultra light backpacking tents can be even shorter and smaller. So it should fit a wide range of people. You know, most people, or if you're over six and a half foot, then you've got <laughs> you've got other issues besides the length of the tent, right? Uh, it's hard to buy clothing and whatnot. My dad's about six and a half foot, and he has trouble too, so it probably wouldn't be the right tent for him. But overall, I mean, it's not like I said, it's not ultra light, but and it's not super large. It doesn't. It's not like you know, living in a house type of thing, but. It's, it's a happy medium. It does, it, it is lighter. It's not a, you know, six or seven, eight pound tent, uh, like some of these. Coleman, I think, makes a couple really good tents that really handle the weather well, give you a lot more room, but they're, they're very heavy. You know, you, eight pounds, and I wouldn't want to backpack with that. I mean, as it is, seven, seven pounds, nine, uh, I'm sorry, four pounds, nine ounces is still a little heavy. But again, there's things you can do and drop it down to three pounds, 14 ounces. Okay, but it is very weatherproof. It is pretty durable seeming. And, it, you know, the zippers work really good. Good. That's something to think about, especially if you're going to be spending money like this on a tent. You want the zippers to work. You don't want a tent where you constantly get it stuck on the, on the, on the nylon. Uh, you don't want to have it rip. It seems like it's quality. It's not going to give you a lot of issues. It should last you a few seasons, 
if not multiple, depending on how much you use it. I mean, you could probably have it for 10 years if you don't, if you go once a year, you might have it for longer. But it definitely, it's, it's a quality, quality tent, I think, for the money and for the weight and for the size and all that. It's a happy medium down the board. So let's talk about ease of put together. I'm sorry I'm just talking about it sitting here, but I'm gonna throw some video up of me using it so it's not just me sitting chatting at the camera. But the ease of using it, it's very simple to set up. It really doesn't take much time. I did it myself in, I think it was about 20 minutes at Visito Lake, but of course I wasn't, wasn't really putting a lot of time and effort into it. I was taking some breaks and whatnot. Uh, Carter and I did in about eight minutes flat, but we were also kind of messing around. They say it's a five minute setup. I think it easily could be a five minute setup if you know you do it enough and you've spent some time doing it and you, you understand how it works. You probably throw it together in five, five minutes, easy. Okay, um, takedown takes a little longer because you gotta fold everything, get everything in perfect. That That's a 20 minute process with two people, probably 15 maybe with two people. And for me, it took about 30 minutes, but I'm kind of meticulous when it comes to that. I wanna try to fold them as close as possible. Again, it's, it, when I pack it back in, it's not like this, okay? Now, the shape of the bag, you gotta realize this is a square. It's, it seems bulkier than, than really it is, okay? Because this is kind of pushing out. It's not compression strapped or anything like that. But being a square and kind of sitting more flat, this actually fits really well in the bag. You wouldn't think so, but I like it. I really like the shape of it. You can see how thin that gets. Okay, so you put it in the bag, and then you stick stuff in front of it. Generally, you want to put light stuff, or maybe put this on the outside as your back, right? And stick heavier stuff here. But you can really compress this to pretty flat. It's almost like it's not there. I mean, it is, but it, it, it seems big and bulky, but really the shape of it is not bad in a bag. There are ways to get things in here to make it fit just fine. I mean, it's a very, I think, backpackable, that's not a word, but you know, a backpackable type tent. You really could take this backpacking. It is heavier than some of these ultralights, but it's going to give you a lot more comfort, a little more space. If you're just a one person, it is a little big for, you know, bivy sack is pro uh, bivy tent type is in my opinion a little better because it's lighter it's smaller if you're just one person you know it works but you know this is this could be a one person with a lot of room type of stuff you know you could throw all your stuff in there so here's another thing about the tent is you know to get it down to weight they probably you're probably not including the rain fly that's my guess but I think the rain fly is really nice to have so obviously you can see it's mesh on the top here you're not gonna get bugs or anything in, but if it does rain, you're gonna get dumped on. That is, uh, you know, a mesh, and you'll get wet. So you definitely need the rain fly. Even if it's not raining, I like having it. It just kind of gives me that more sense of protection in a way. I don't know why, but it just gives you that feeling of being in a place. You feel kind of secure in there in a way. But the rain fly, the way that it works is it sticks out quite a bit further from the actual the tent. So you could actually put a lot of stuff there too. You can put your bags. In fact, when Carter and I you know, went, we didn't have a lot of room with the two person. Uh, with us both in there, we couldn't put our stuff in, but our stuff sat right there. So we could grab our bags if we needed, like for toilet paper or whatnot in the middle of the night, right? Whatever we needed was there that we could quickly grab, okay? Because it stuck out quite a bit further. So here's the end of the tent and it would stick out like this, right? So it, it kind of comes out and here's the end of the tent and it would come out like this. So it gave you a lot of room to stick stuff. So that's nice. So in, in overall, I like having that, that uh, rain fly, basically the tarp that goes over it. And it just kind of gives that layer of protection. I just like it. Plus it's easy to put on and, and whatnot. So, Let's go ahead and take this out. I'm gonna show you guys kind of how nicely this packs up. Of course, this is some extra effort. So this is, I believe, the rain fly. Okay, you can see. Now without the rain fly, look at that, it's really small. So if you really were worried and you knew it wasn't gonna rain. Okay, this is the tent poles. 
Okay, so this is, and it all comes in nice little bags that you can kind of stuff in there, all the little components. You can see. Now they're really nice. Let me just show you really quick. And you can see they, they've got a, a bungee and then they just stick together like that. It's really simple. They just come out, stick together. They almost do it automatically. Boom. Really simple, really easy. Just nice. And uh, it, while this is got some weight, it's probably about a pound for all those, it's really not that bad. And then here's the steaks. Also come in a little bag, and this is all of the steaks that come with it. They're aluminum. Okay, just simple steaks, not too heavy, but you know, some extra weight. Now this doesn't come necessarily with the bag when you buy it. You have to actually buy this separate, but this is the, the footprint. Okay, and you can see it still packs down really nice and small. So there's the footprint. I, I just stick in the bag because I generally like to bring it unless I'm going like super far distance. I really have to watch my weight. And this is the tent in general. Now I'm not the best at really folding this up perfect, but there we go. If you really want to get it tight, you can compress it a little bit with these straps. Those are what you use to, you know, tie the tent down to the stakes and whatnot, but you could actually wrap it around there and compress it uh, even more. There we go, that's everything. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, I got one more of these compression straps. I don't use all of them. I think it comes with an extra, so that just stays in the bag. And there we go. Now, that's it. That's everything. So you could technically pick and choose. If you didn't want to bring stakes and you just wanted to find sticks or something and use those, there's a good little bit of weight you could drop. Okay? Um, you kind of need these. You don't necessarily need the rain fly or this. So you could literally get away with that, which is pretty good. Okay? If you really had to. The rain fly is nice though, guys. And you don't always know if it's going to rain or not, and you'd be pretty miserable if it's raining without that, okay? So it's a good idea at least to bring the rain fly, okay? I mean, really, it's pretty small and pretty darn light. But you could get away with without the stakes. Then you're left with this bag. Now, I will say this bag is really nice. I actually found it really useful. Once you have your tent set up, I like hanging things, but where I live, it's bear country. Okay, there's bears, a lot of bears everywhere. They're not brown bears, luckily. They're black bears, so you don't have to worry. They're not going to really attack you unless you get between a mama and her cub or you surprise one or it feels threatened, okay? But if you're in your tent, you just don't have to worry except for food. And there's a main issue. There's, there's always a problem with, with food. They, they come by and they want to check out what food is there. They, they have got, bears have a great smell. Um, they're very related dogs, they're like in the canine type family, and they have, they have better smell than, than any dog. And in fact, they've got, I think what they said is the, the best smell, uh, from what I read, is they've got the best sense of smell uh, of any mammal. So obviously I think sharks have better than, than they do, but they're not a ma uh, I don't think they're a mammal. So of any mammal, they got the best sense of smell, and they can smell for a little bit for you know, a long distance. So they can come, I mean, if you've got food sitting out, uneaten or even, you know, whatever it is, bags that had, that you had eaten food in that has a residue of, of, the, of the food, you don't want to leave them around. You want to get them away from camp, far away, and even up a tree. So that's what I do. I find this bag really useful. I can stuff, so I bring, I always bring plastic, uh, you know, Ziploc bags with me and I stuff everything that I've eaten, like wrappers or whatever, in those plastic bags, stick it in this bag. I actually found this really useful. I just stick it in this bag. There's a little Velcro here. And stick it together. Kind of, you can see, keeps it together. And then there's these hook. And then I can tie a rope onto this, throw it up a tree, and take that right up the tree. It's really nice. I like that because then I'm not, you know, I can take any food that I have and this holds a lot of food, more than you would ever bring with you, this holds a lot. So you know, you can just throw all your goods that you don't want the bears to get to up a tree with this. So that's kind of nice, okay? 
that's just kind of an extra thing that kind of comes with it. So, but if you're really trying to save space, you're not going to have that bag. You just stick this in um, in your backpack along with whatever else you needed to bring, right? You would try to save weight, even though this doesn't weigh a lot. Every ounce counts when you're doing, especially really long distance. Okay, and then when you're done, look. I mean, you know, once you roll these up and get them, you know, as tight as you possibly can get it. Look how easy it is just to kind of put this back together. And that's why I like this. Some of these, you know, that are like the round, like more cylinder shaped, it's a pain in the butt. It really is to get them back in. I'm going to do this real time. I might fast forward this, but I'll tell you the exact time it took. Of course, I'm not folding it or unfolding, but. So let's. I always like putting the two bulkier items, like the tarp and the, or the rain fly, and the actual tent in. Kind of separate those on either side of each other. Then you can stick the rain, uh, the the bulkier items right in between them. And that's how I like it. That's how I like it. You guys can probably do it, you know, a different way and be okay with it. And then I always like sticking this in here just so I have it, so I don't forget it with me or whatnot. So there's the, the footprint. And there we go. Pretty simple, guys. You know, another nice thing is you could arrange this in a way where you could make it more cylindrical. So if we compress this down to kind of like how those cylindrical ones are, look at that. That's actually about the same size as some of these, most of these others that are the cylindrical tents. At least the bags that come with it. That's not bad. And really that can compress down really nice and tight. And you've got a pretty space saver tent right there. So I do, I, I like this flat like this. Overall, like I said, I think this is a great tank for the money. I don't think anyone would be displeased in buying this. If you knew what you're getting into, obviously you know this isn't an ultra light tent. It's not. This is not the most durable tent in the world. I mean, it's not, I think, uh, you know, Coleman and some other brands make more durable, but of course they're super heavy. This is just an all around good tent. You can technically take it backpacking, again, not an ultralight, but you could do it. It's not so heavy that you can't do it. It's about half the weight of some of these others like Coleman. So it is light enough, okay, you can take it. It's also pretty durable. Not as dur durable as some others in the same price range even, but it's also lighter. So, I mean, it's just, it's a, it's an all around good tent and it's super, super waterproof. So, I mean, there's just, there's no problem with it leaking. There's no problem with any issues. Maybe a super torrential downpour. You put it, you put the tent in a place where it starts to flood. You're going to get maybe some wetness, obviously, but you're going to, you got to be smart enough not to put the tent there. If you know it's going to rain, don't put a tent in like a flood zone, right? If you take care of this and you, you do it right and you set it up correctly, uh, I don't think you're going to have any leakage issues. So it is dry. It'll keep you dry. It'll keep you safe. Um, you know, it, it does what you need it to do. Plus, I find this to be pretty warm, actually. So sometimes tents will have a breeze that comes through, which is nice in the summer, I guess. And if you wanted that breeze, you could take off that, that top tarp and you could get a breeze because it does have the mesh. And this actually does allow quite a bit of breeze coming through down through the tent. And I noticed that when I took off that, that top tarp, um, the, the rain fly, that it did feel much cooler inside the tent. Of course, with the rain fly on, it was, you know, super hot because the sun was beating down on it. But with that off, it did allow for some air circulation. But with that tarp on there, it also keeps you quite warm. It actually kind of keeps the heat in pretty well. It doesn't allow it to dissipate too much. So, I mean, just overall, I think this is a pretty darn good tent uh, for, for the money. 
When I bought it on Amazon, I actually got mine on Amazon. I think I got it for like $120. It was a good deal. It was on sale at the time. And that sale might come back. Uh, right now, the last time I checked, it was like $160. I've seen it for $150. Uh, there's, there's some other websites um, that you can get them for, you know, in the 150 range. I've seen them for $149. I've seen them for $139. I'm going to throw up an Amazon link for you guys because that's always, it is always changing, which is weird, but because sometimes they have deals or maybe that seller ran out of the product, so they throw up the, the next sellers that might be more or less or whatnot. When I got it, it was 119 and I have a feeling that's going to come back. I just don't have the time to keep on changing links all the time, and I find that Amazon always seems to have them in stock, so it's not always always going to be the best deal, though when I got it, it was the best I had ever seen. 119 I had not seen that price anywhere else for this specific tent, okay? Um, so sometimes that'll come up. All right, so there we go, guys. If you want to check this tent out, if it's something that you're interested in, you need a two-person tent, and you don't want to go spend four or five hundred bucks, but you need something that you can kind of take backpacking, maybe not super long trips, okay? There's not a, there's not a you know, five-day um, excursion type backpack, you, you just, it's too much weight, okay? You need to ultralight at that point, you need to spend the money. But if you're just going out for a day or two, a couple days, and that's, that's, you know, 150 is your price range, you want something durable that's going to last you a few seasons, this is a really good tent. In my opinion, this is it. This is a good, good tent. So, check it out, guys. Again, I've got a link down in the description section. If you guys are interested in it, go ahead and click that. And it will take you right to Amazon. If I do have time and I see the price somewhere else, I'll put that link also. I'll try to put a couple links, but you know, I can't promise I can do that. Okay. And if you guys at the time see this specific tent at a better price, let me know. Uh, PM me or even put it in the, in, in the comment section. Just write me in the comment section. Everyone else will be able to see it. And just let everyone know, okay, there's a better price somewhere else. Uh, great, please do that. Um, again, what I'm trying to do with my channel is build a community with you guys. So all, all of you, um, all my subscribers, I want us to work together and try to find the best deals and try to help each other out. Um, you know, it just is really nice to be able to have those connections with pretty much everyone around the world. So if you see a website that has a better price, let, link it in the description section. And that, that's awesome. Or in the, not description section, in the comment section. That's great. Please let us know. Um, all of us. And I'll try to, if I see that, I'll try to post it up and in the description section. It's just, sometimes those sales, they only last a short time, then I have to do constant editing, and I've got hundreds of videos, and I just can't do that for all of them. Well, guys, thank you for joining me today. I hope this was an informative review for you, and it gave you a little more insight onto this tent. And guys, if you have any questions, or you just want to tell me your thoughts on this tent, maybe you own one, and you think differently than I've said on this, or maybe you agree and you just want to tell me, whatever it may be, uh, the comment section down below is a great way for you to interact with me, and I'll do my very best. I can't promise I can get to every comment right away, and if I miss any, I apologize, but I will do my very best to comment back and answer your questions or whatever it may be, guys. Uh, please use the comment section, let me know. And if you like this video, please hit that thumb up button. There's a thumb up button down there. It kind of lets me know, gives me a little more insight onto what reviews are good, what videos are good, what you guys like, what you don't like. Also, if you don't like it, hit that thumb down button. There is a thumb down button. Let me know, you know, hey, this isn't, I don't like it. I don't like this video. I don't like what you said, whatever. I mean, heck, I don't like your face, whatever it may be, whatever it is. Just hit that thumb down button if you hate the video, you don't like my video, or thumb it up if you like it, okay? Also, if you haven't done this before, please hit that subscribe button, it's right down below. If you hit a subscribe button on YouTube, YouTube will basically let you know when I have new videos coming. I put out four, I try to put out three to four a week. It's not always guaranteed. For instance, uh, next week I might actually have to only put out two. But 
I, I put out quite a few videos. Some are review videos like this, some are just me chatting at the camera, but I also try to do a fishing video every week and a fly tying video every week. So there are, you know, some other things there's besides me chatting. So if you haven't done that before, hit that subscribe button. All right, guys, well, thanks again for joining me. It was really a pleasure to have you. Now, you guys go out and do a little camping and catch some fish. I'll talk to you later. See you on the next video.